No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this yet. <laughs> Hey. Hey girl, hey. I'm Keeper. What's up, though? Don't forget to fuck that subscribe button. Are you talking about my penis again? No, not this time. Damn it. <laughs> that was funny you threw that in there. So, every time we're doing this, I'm over here thinking, it was like, what would be good for like a beginning one across the board? But then I'm like, I'm just gonna throw a bunch in there. And Mike can choose from there, because it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> so I got a Monte Cristo and a um, uh, Rocky Patel. Two hard fucking choices. <laughs> like, neither one of those are bad. No, they're good. And I've had both of them with this whiskey. Which one? Monte Cristo. I'll go with that one. You can't go wrong with a Monty or a Rocky. Patel. You can't really go wrong with either. You really can't. But all right, before one... before we get started, I need to do it up and like shake it out and like get in the smoke pit. And I just stretched back like this, and the center part of my back just went like. And I was like, oh damn. Okay. Let's <laughs> get the blood flowing a bit so that we're not falling asleep. Not falling asleep. I don't think we were struggling with that, but... No, it definitely wasn't. <sighs> Alright, so we'll cut these and then we'll start her off. So one of these days I'll actually bring like a real cutter. I have what That's the thing I've hated about this whole move that we've been doing all fucking year. It's like I have all this shit. That you don't have access to. That I don't it's have access all to. packed it. away. Or I gotta dig. I need to sharpen that knife. I'm in danger. I need to sharpen a couple of my knives. This is how we busted up the knife sharpener and gotten, gotten work done, son. You have a smooth stone or a whetstone? Yeah, I got a whetstone. I got a couple different whetstones. <laughs> You're like... <laughs> no, I was going to close it and I was like, I've never closed another man's knife. And it's a Tennessee thing. That's fucking weird, bro. Oh, fucking take that weird just... Do you see how glorious this knife is? I actually have one that looks very, very similar. My dad gave that to me. Ask Daddy. <laughs> I, I seriously have one, whereas the copper on each side, and then the inside is wood. So I have one. <laughs> this is name pending. I'm Mike Culverson. I'm name pending, and this is Keeper. No. No, I'm, I, Ke I'm Keeper. Your name. No, I'm Mike, and this is Keeper. This is name pending. I'm Keeper. That's Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to just talk and hang out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much. Salud. <laughs> oh, that was a bigger sip than I expected. <laughs> it went a little bit harder than oh. I... Because you're used to, like, you do a salute and you're like... Mm, yeah. And you're like, ah, I didn't mean to do that. Got Never more mind. into that one than I wanted to. <laughs> so I want to start it off. Well, kind of like. before we do that, we were talking about my knife, right? Yes. And I wanted to tell you that my my dad gave me his buck knife, which was my grandfather's buck knife, but it had been sharpened down over the years so much that it was like it was the this thing. much yep. blade left. Like, it's like dangerous to carry, but it is fucking razor sharp. I have, I have a knife like that that I got that was passed down from my dad. First time I went hunting, first deer I killed, I got I got this buck knife, and it was fucking awesome. It was passed from his dad and his dad. So it's three generations. Jimmy Dykes, baseball player in the Phillies at the time, passed it down, and it came all the way down to me. But that that thing has been bastardized. Like, yes, it, it may have been that small at a time, but somewhere was a metal worker in this chain. So they put more and more metal on it. So now it looks like a normal knife, with like four different layers of other metal in there. <laughs> but it's like, I can't get rid of it because it's a family knife. I don't want to get rid of it, but it has, it has history to it. So, I really want to start with this one because it's light. It, it definitely made me think, what is one game you bought that you regretted shortly after playing it? 
at any point, either all the way through, partly through, or you started the credits and you're like, nope, this game sucks. Um, man. Like, for me, there was a couple, but it was like, what what has been, like, the so, one? I think the one... There's been a couple, but I think the one that, like, made me feel really bad was Mass Effect and Drombro. So, in, okay. and it took me part of the game to realize what I was not enjoying about it, and what I wasn't enjoying about it was the music. Which, yes, I understand that Mass Effect has, like, ambient music, but normally it, like, kicks in when there's action going on or something, right? But, like, the ambient music that they had picked for Andromeda was not enjoyable at all. And it detracted completely from the the story in the game. And I was just... I wasn't about it, man. I wasn't sold. So I've been thinking about this question all day. Mass Effect was definitely up there. Marble Alliance was definitely up there mm. on Xbox 360 when it first came out. Or Ultimate Alliance. That's what it was. Ultimate Alliance. It was Marvel, but I think the one that hits most to me, and the funniest thing is I own every single one of these games because I love I love the idea of the story. Bioshock. Really? I The first time I played it, I was young to the point that I was dealing with my own demons at the time that it just scared the shit out of me. But I loved the story. I could watch someone else play it. I could just never be the person playing it. That's why horror games, even the spooky game, Phasmophobia, which we need to play the update, especially mm-hmm. on Nightmare Mode, where <laughs> you only have two clues. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm down to play. But I'm it, it play. just it spooked me, and it got to the point where I was like, I, I enjoy the story. I enjoy watching other people. But I regretted buying it, especially when they went on sale, knowing I was going to buy the games anyway. It's like, that's what it was for me. But that was that was one of the ones that was like, Ugh. I think I regretted Final Fantasy XII. Not because it was a bad game. I know some people think that Final Fantasy XII was a bad game. I liked Final Fantasy XII. The reason I regretted Final Fantasy XII is because I had gotten the game. This was when I couldn't afford to purchase stuff for myself. My parents got it yeah. for me. Um, and then I let my cousin borrow it. I'm afraid for how this story continues. Never to be seen or heard from again. Because borrowed with my cousin means keep forever. This is why I'm very adamant about borrowing things. Like your pressure washer has lived up there anytime we haven't had to show it. (laughs) It's protected from the sun, protected from the rain. Which I I just want to pressure wash off your benches. Yeah. Honestly, that's it. And then I still have your chainsaw, which is inside, completely protected from the weather. Which we're about to get the chainsaw on season. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. I don't think you understand. I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, I haven't chainsaw in a while. And after my parents come down here, my dad's already dead set on, oh, we're moving down there. My mom's like, oh, we need to figure things out. My dad has gone through the whole process of, I just got to tell him. He was like, I just got to tell my mom, it's my Mimi, my grandma. But he's already dead, so he's like, she already lives with her boyfriend pretty much most of the time anyway. We're managing two houses where we'd go from like 4,000. We'd build a barn divinium up to like 3,000 down in Texas, and we just get acreage. And his words, exactly, fuck it. We got the resident Texan, Mike, who's like, <laughs> the whole fire thing, my dad loved it. <laughs> my aunt was like I don't even remember what she said around the fire it's like you're doing it wrong or oh you should yeah, do this yeah. and you're just like then you do it <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because she was a youth pastor so she understands people of a younger generation and just like oh, I'm done she's still a youth pastor and my dad was just like this is someone I could just be like fuck it you're a dumbass let's <laughs> hang out <laughs> and my dad has never been as open as he has been when you're around. He yeah. may have not seemed open to people that know him, but he was is extremely open in comparison to how he normally is. No, I, I didn't. I obviously, I yeah. I've never met him before. Right? But he was dead beat on. We're gonna move to Kerbo. <laughs> like, no doubt about it. He was like, Kerbo has a VA. They can deal with all my shit. I want at least 10 acres. And I talked to him. I was like, good luck just finding 10 acres. You're more likely going to find more 
they'll realistically sell their house for maybe about eight fifty to a million, depending on buyer. Yeah. They bought it at for its without all the upgrades is like seven eighty, so just short of eight hundred. So And realistically they can build a really nice barn dominium for about two thirty. Mm-hmm. You know, I brought all this up, it was like you're gonna spend more money on the land that you guys want versus the barn dominium. It was like it just depends on how much land. So they're gonna get twenty acres easy. Easily get twenty acres, if not more. Yeah. My dad started looking at prices. He called me the day on the way home. He, it just had me one of those perfect moments. I just got in my car. AC was perfect. Started listening to uh, Galaxy. Is it um, the audiobook? Oh, um, Galaxy's Edge. Yep, yeah, Galaxy's Edge. And then my dad calls and I was like, "Of course, right?" When I'm hearing them talk about Pappy. By the way, I figured out the Mistborn series for you. You don't read the first part. You start at Alloy of Law. That is literally in my wish list. You, okay. You go. You you skip over the first like. Because I can figure things six out. or seven books or whatever it is, yeah. which is you know the first like the first big portion with the Empire and everything. And instead, we're going to go straight to Alloy of Law, and I realized it. Especially with Galaxy's Edge, is because you like you need that certain amount of action immediately. I do need a little bit of action, and so Alloy <laughs> of Law will get you there. Especially because it does. I love Vin, and Kaladin, and everyone from the original Mistborn. I truly do, but like my boy Wax and Wayne, these are my boys. It's just it's too slow, and it's like, and I still I actually have Alloy of Law in my wish list, and I was like. This was the next one I was going to get. So I, I guess I bought the other books already. And yeah. I just haven't got to this one. And there's a cricket on the table. Go away. It's smoke. <laughs> okay, don't go away. You went away. At least it's not a cockroach. I haven't seen a cockroach in this house yet, honestly. Yeah, right. But I'll, I'll jump to that one next. After I finish this series all the way. <laughs> I have two credits in the bank. <laughs> and I'm just like, ah. But I, I do want to get into the nitty gritty of all this. So I want to start with the AI. We've been talking about computers, talking about nerd stuff, magic, video yeah. games. So who do you think is the number one AI wise in the world? You chat GPT or China? I mean, AI as a whole. And I'll give you a little bit more stipulation. This is only from 2013 to 2022. And this is only companies with at least 1.5 million of prime investments. Yeah, I mean, who controls chat GPT? I have, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know who they are. But of countries, who do you think is the number one? Oh, China. Oh, I was surprised when I read this. I was like, we, we've talked about AI previously on the channel. And I was like, I want to dive into this. Number one is America at 4,000. Really? China is number two. Fuck yeah. America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> number two is China. Guess how how many they have. If oh. America's at 4K, China's at 1K. 1K? I really? was surprised by that number. And then we go to the UK at 630 companies. Then we go to Israel at 482. And the fifth one threw me for a loop. Never would have thought it. It's one of our neighboring countries. Canada? Canada at 341. See, but that's the thing is, like, I would have guessed Canada because Canada has been, like, that slow, silent fart throughout their history, right? I was reading something the other day. It was like, it's not Ontario's next is what everybody's talking about for a, a was it, a sub-country? I don't even know what, a, a province. That's what it is. A province to secede from the big the big across the board so they're slowly making as the united states as americans is making more states and and that threw me for a loop it's like everybody hates their prime minister there <laughs> yeah they do they really do like i, I want to dive into that but i don't know enough about their prime minister i don't know he's just uh, apparently like and this is like very very like low level of knowledge of what yeah. I know. And, and by yeah. the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna chill something even though we don't get paid for this, but I, I want you to look up like grounded news. Ground news. 
Oh, I I use them. Do you? Yeah. Okay. That's where I got most of this from. Because I I, I love it because and again I'm not getting paid to shill this, but uh, I'm no, really not getting paid to shill. They're this. really neutral. They show but, you, but which... they do they they'll show you this is a left leaning, mm -hmm. this is a right leaning, this is a neutral, and then they'll be like, this is highly factual. And whenever they say that it's highly factual, oh, I I'll dive read into it. it. I don't even care if I care about that subject or not. I'm going to dive into it. I'll read it, and I'm like, it's actually highly factual. Yeah. And I think it was the fat electrician who, like, I watched one of his things, and he was shilling it out. And I was like, well, let me at least look at it, right? So who got me on it was Angry Cops. Angry really? Cops got me on it because a lot like him, he's a military guy just like us. Yeah. And he wants all the facts. He's like, look, I'm kind of just like, you do you. I really am. It's like, look, I'm me, and if you don't get along with me, that's fine. But this is who I am. And this is where I was like, oh, cool, good story. Or, okay, I can see the left on that. I can see the right on that. It's like, but it's, if I can find a neutral one, cool, I'm going to do that. But I'm also going to look at the left and the right because I want, I want to see where everybody's talking about. Right. Like, I mean, Starbucks, perfect example. Like, which, which this goes into a lighter topic. But mm -hmm. you you uh, you remember Rich Bro? Mm -hmm. um, he brought some coffee and, he, and and he had me try it out. And he's like, I really like this coffee. And this I'm is afraid of the following words. And so this is how bougie I I had gotten because at at work I just have a regular percolator coffee maker. I have a fancy one at home. You've seen it. Um, at work I have, I think it's called Murphy's Coffee. Yeah, you can buy it at Costco, and it's it's the blackest coffee sweeter than I, I still take in like fancy coffee into work like i get my coffee off. i of, do and it's gone in like two days i get my coffee <laughs> off of fresh roasted oh no one else is using my coffee right oh no i mean everybody has like a coffee fun we all do it together so they know no, when fuck I, that shit i'm bringing my coffee and i'm <laughs> drinking my coffee y'all fuck off you can totally make your own coffee pot but and um, i'll totally support that one on the side <laughs> yeah but so i i mean i have my own drip coffee maker right and mm -hmm. So drip coffee does not make good good coffee, right? You're not making coffee the proper way. It's not good. It, yeah. It's not the proper way to, to brew it. It doesn't normally keep the temperature consistent. You know, the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. um, but even still, my coffee tastes really good because it's fancy coffee. I get it off freshcoffee.com. Yeah. Hey, uh, sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> it is good coffee, though. It's really good coffee. I love it. I, bought, I purchased, like... You sponsor us, we'll totally have. I purchase right like here. eight pounds every month of okay. coffee because I also put like two pounds in a bucket to for I, emergencies. I still need to give you those ceiling buckets. Yeah, I need more buckets. Um, but that work here, Rich yeah, Bro. So he gives me this coffee that he got from his girlfriend. Um, and he's like, I really like this coffee. And I was like, Okay, I'll make it. And I take a sip. I look at him. And I was like, Rich Bro, this tastes burnt. <laughs> it does too and the reason is because and i have this explained to me by someone right one time right is because when you're roasting coffee you you go through various like cracks right correct and and you're trying to hit a certain level of crack right for for like darkness and stuff like this mm -hmm. right and it's typically based off of the blend and you know or where it's sourced from um but my understanding is that Starbucks tries to do all of theirs to the same level, no matter where it comes from. And so yes. it always tastes burnt. Well, that's why I always go with the John Wayne there. It's pretty much double shy espresso. And sometimes they burn it and it pisses me off. Cause oh. you know, I like espresso. I yeah. have my own espresso, Italian. I'll normally, yeah, I'll normally go for a red eye when I go in. I mean, it's, well, I think I get four shots of espresso. And then you just taste of cream. So that way you have flavor to your shot. That, that's really it. But that that's what I do. Now, once upon a time, I had, back in my very younger days, many, many, many moons ago, I, uh, so I had 12 a, years ago. I'm guesstimating here. No, younger than that. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I was 19 at this time. I'm 34 now. Oh, I was close. But um, <laughs> I had a friend who worked at Starbucks, and I walked in, and I said, hey, I need a lot of caffeine. And he goes, okay, cool. And he gives me a cup full of 18 shots of espresso. Did he, he gave you the FMU. Yeah, and I drank all but 
like that much. Like the FMU, it literally stands for fuck me up. And I was like, like vibrating. I could see sound. I could hear color. Yep. And then I crashed. Like I was like playing video games and then it was like, <sighs> yep. I'm over at my buddy's house, like on his couch. And I went from like 5,000 to nothing. My power was over 9,000. And then I got nothing. I'm a Krillin at this point. That sucks. <laughs> I, I've had that. And you're just like vibrating in place. You're like... Uh... Yeah. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and most of the time that's what I'll do. Or I'll do a cold brew. And it's like... I'd... Nothing wrong with the company. Don't care what you support. I like what you provide. But it would... Going back to the beginning of it, it was like they were threatened. But what you hear just from the right wing is, oh, they're giving this up. They don't care about it anymore. And of course, they bring up Bud Light and Target. It's like, but that's all they do. They just name drop. It's like, can you give me more information? Like, I need the facts. Tell me, tell me the truth of left and right across the board. The left side, the right side, and the middle. Give, give me everything because I need information. That's uh, just how I understand things. And... I was just like, it wasn't because they're done with it. No, they're they're tired of being harassed, which goes in the whole Trump thing. Hillary brought up, Hillary Clinton apparently brought up as like uh, Trump supporters need to be deprogrammed, and that's been yeah. going around in the news because he's being indicted. And well, it, and not only that, but the FBI apparently said that they were going to mark Trump supporters as an extremist terrorist group, and they were going to be put under investigation. Now, I'm only saw one headline that said that it's not I like i two that talked about it it's not like i read a bunch of articles on this right i didn't read a bunch of articles but i'm kind of not shocked no because you have the proud boys that stemmed off it and every single one of those pretty much neo-nazi like if you break it down to the core of it that's but by the same token we we had um blm on the other side which were kicking in the doors to restaurants and standing in the middle of it and saying, hey, who here supports BLM? And if you didn't raise your hand, you got fucking harassed. Correct. And I've seen, again, on ground, it was, it's pretty much left side and right side. The right was like, oh, this is Black Panther. And left is like, this is a new wave of Black Panther. It's like, okay, well, so I dove into Black Panther. I mean, I knew a bunch about them, but I looked more into it. It was like, they weren't that violent in comparison to today. Did they do stuff? Yes. Is that all of them? No. And then I looked at the right. Proud Boys. Okay, you're all Trump supporters. Cool. But you're uneducated. You you don't care. You're just, I'm doing this to make a point. Right. But you're just chaotic evil at this point. I'm getting to my spot regardless of what it takes. But I think the biggest thing with his whole indictment and the Proud Boys and Clinton pushing out this stuff was the January 6th stuff that keeps coming out. So, like, I, I'm really pissed off about the January 6th stuff before, and this is very contentious, right? But my problem being is because it felt so orchestrated. It did. Like, you watch the videos of everyone just kind of meandering around. Meanwhile, we can do direct comparisons between the BLM riots where you see them burning shit to mm -hmm. the ground. With San Antonio, we went to a prayer night downtown with everyone. Everyone that was going to be there right before us was BLM. And there was people that were from like St. Louis. They got bussed out. We actually talked to them. They got bussed out. It's like, who bust you? I don't know. A charter bus came and we all hopped on and it's like, hold on. You have way too much trust in whoever's busting you. It's like, I don't know if it's just because I'm, I don't know. I, I just, Paranoid? I'm yeah. Definitely. Hey, yeah. hop on this bus. We're going to San Antonio. It's like, but we, we got to pray with a lot of them, pray for their safety. And I'm white, they're black. So at the time this whole movement started, everybody was like, oh, cracker. And they were just pissed across the board. I was like, do you mind if I pray for your safety for everything you're going to do? Immediately their tone changed. Not just for a tra prayer, but it was like, maybe it was the tone I gave them. It was like, it's like, I understand you guys are, you have a cause. Yeah. I'm not here to stop your cause. I actually support your cause, assuming that you're not burning down stores. And 
If it's like the LA riots in which you accept that if you're going to try and loot and burn down a store, you might get shot. Yeah, like don't don't burn down my city, but it's like I'll pray for your safety and I I hope you eventually get it, home. And, and guess what? Protesting works. It does work. And this goes into the January 6th thing. It's like it really made me think. It was like for a while, America, and even I agree on it, is like government needs a change. Okay, well, what did we do to England at the time? We pretty much had a riot. Mm-hmm. We did. It was like, do I think it should have came allegedly from Trump or from his vice president or whatever, whatever bullshit's being spread right now? Or what's yeah. the truth? I don't know the truth. I'm not here to it, tell I, you the truth. There's so much nonsense going on and so much non facts going on that I can't judge what the truth is. You are a brave man. I am. But it was like, I do think it. I thought you swallowed the stones for a reason yeah. for a moment because I couldn't see them. Oh, that would hurt my butthole. <laughs> I do think... That's not true. I've seen it, Gabe. Yeah, you know. But I do think January 6th need, needed to happen, not in the level that it happened. Like, I don't think... I don't believe the majority of everyone should have been Trump supporters. I think it should have been left and right moving together and be like, Republican to Democrat. Third party is like, look, we need to fix the government. And this is how all of us as a society as a union, as America is like, you guys are doing it wrong. And when, that's how I, I yeah. thought it should have been. Cause I didn't know it. When I watched on the news, it's like, Oh, there's a riot going on. I was like, Oh, cool. America's finally being like, Hey, we don't like the way you're running our government. Yeah. Fix it. This and, is what's instead, wrong. Instead, what happened is we had the BLM riots on one hand, which was through multiple cities. And it was my only of, issue was they destroyed the cities. Well, my like issue was government buildings, small, small third parties. My issue was, is that there was a lack of consistency in the treatment of the people is because the BLM riots yeah. were, well, they're, they're right. They're expressing themselves. They're rioting. They're trying to make it, you know, and then the January 6th riot, well, insurrection, if you talk to some people, which no, it, it was labeled insurrection. I still see it as a riot. It, it was a, it was a more organized riot. The way court systems currently are making it look. Yeah. Um. But it didn't cause as much damage, and it wasn't nearly as violent. And you know, they, it was a lot calmer than the BLM riots were. And but by the same token, these people have been chased down to the ground. They have right. had their lives ruined. They have stayed in prison. They have not had due process. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing is I haven't dug into this enough, no, so I could no, be talking right. out to my ass no, a little it is, bit. It is So I would say it's a levied due process. You're black. I view this as a judge. It really came down to the judge. A lot of the BLM incidents across the board, and this made me look at history. We had the Chicago 8. There was a bunch of white... I, I believe I have to double look on this. I think it was it was a multiple of races. I know there's a black individual at least. I like how I light, lit my pipe, like just With, out of habit, out of habit. When, I, when I'm like smoking, like but I'm so used to just lighting my pipe that I'm like, oh, double let me fist double it. fist this. <laughs> double fist that bad boy. Hey. Ah. <laughs> but I looked the pterodactyl. At, I went back to the Chicago Eight, and they had this huge court case, and then I went. Before that, which was where we had the college riots, but there was the one female that died by the National Guard. Yeah. And I believe that was seven. I know it was around Vietnam time frame. I know they were protesting Vietnam. I thought that there was more than one death. I'll have to double look. I don't remember wholeheartedly on that. I wasn't planning on talking about any of that either. <laughs> yeah, like, well, you know, we started out with AI and here we are. I mean, that's... Well, yeah, we went AI, Trump, and then we just jumped down insurrection. But... No, I I definitely, I understand the point of protesting. I really do. My thing is, if you're going to protest, actually believe in it. And the only reason I say that is because my parents are in a small town. Majority are, majority people in that town are either drug addicts or they're, it's a majority white town in small town, Tennessee. They had a BLM riot with one one white female marching down with an upside down American flag. Okay, you're in distress. 
you did something right. I approve. Yeah. So I even brought that up with my sister she, when Roe versus Wade came up. I was like, I don't, I don't know what you're trying to say with your profile picture. I don't know what you're trying to do with when I still had Facebook. It's like, well, how about you do an upside down flag? You're, you're distressed. You don't agree with what's going on. Like more people would know that than anything else. But this single female just walks through the town. You, we have like 50 people in that town. What? I don't know what you're trying to accomplish. So I did, like, I did get, I get frustrated by the cities who allowed them to take over the city center. Was it Washington or Oregon? Oregon. Oregon was the Portland. one where they owned Portland. Yeah, they owned Portland. They owned Portland. I think it might have been Seattle. No, it was Seattle too. It was Seattle. Seattle also got owned. They tried to do it in Houston, is my understanding. I know they and tried that to got do it in Houston. Broken up like that was shortly that, after that San Antonio Prayer downtown. And if I remember correctly, and I'm going off word of mouth here, but that didn't get broken up by like the cops. That got broken up by like citizens of Houston who went. Nah, bro. We ain't no. It was, it was it was here in town, in San Antonio. I say in town. I'm like 40 miles away from town, but in town, they were talking about um, was it LGBT community was having. I don't even know if it's LGBT. I know there was drag shows in there, and LGBT was there. My favorite part about that, and I have I have friends on both sides of it. I was so proud of the veterans that showed up. It was like, no, I fought for this bullshit overseas. They have their right of free speech. They have their right to congregate. They do. It so was one, like, one I the... was so fucking proud of that. It was like every single one of those guys, props. Like, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. It was like, I may not agree with everything someone else does. Yeah. But I, I want them to I be able to speak. I believe in this. Exactly. Ugh. I was so pissed. It was all over the news. It was like all these people carrying AR-15s against this. And you see across media, like everyone that showed up from not even in Texas that showed up to this event. So that way it was a safe event. Yeah. Like maybe they agreed with it. Maybe they don't. I don't care. There were some of them that said they did and didn't. Here's, here's... But they showed up to protect this event. Ugh. It. Look, you, you have free speech. You have the ability to be yourself. If here's, I regress. Here's my... Here's my sticking point when it comes to, well, a lot of um, liberals say about gun carrying. Is they like, oh, well, you wouldn't want blank and blank minority or blank and blank whatever carrying a weapon. Yes, I want everyone, everyone carrying a weapon. <laughs> exactly. I want you learning how to, how to fire a weapon safely and disassemble and reassemble and clean a weapon when you're a child. I want it to be like the good old days when they had fucking shooting classes in high school. I agree. I don't care which way you lean. I fought for every single person. You fought for every single person to protect our freedoms. I want you to be able. I want all the. I don't care if I, I, I agree with the them or not. To be upheld. So, and I want the First Amendment. I want the Second Amendment for everybody. Yep. If you don't want it, that's fine. But no, if you're around me. I'm going to protect the shit out of you. I don't care if I like you. I don't care if I don't like you. If a cop runs up on you and it's like, you can't carry this weapon here. And I'm going to be like, nah, he can carry this weapon here. I'll go to prison with him. Yep. And, it, and I don't care. You can have purple hair and not know what kind of gender you are. and be like a pansexual kitten. I don't care. I At work, uh, my junior admin, we talk all the time about politics. And when he first started, he was like, oh, you're an anarchist. It's like, no, I... I like to label myself a constitutionalist. So go, so you're right leaning. No, I I told you exactly. I'm a constitutionalist. Like, well, that's the thing is, it's a binary system, right? You're either left or right. And and that's what we found out. And me and him were talking about a bunch of stuff. And he uses the programs the government set up to help him because where he was, he was below the poverty line before this job, and he was dealing with issues of his own. And he's first natural born citizen from an immigrant i think that's how you say it and so i under i under i can which comprehend i just don't understand but i can comprehend what he went through and what his dad went through i can't understand because i'm not a first naturalized born citizen but we went to the point it was like 
oh, well, you're an anarchist. He's like, no, I, I understand the government, but I, I want us to follow our true values of what we started on. And this, by the way, is why I will never be considered a, a true libertarian is because I understand that to have a functional government, you have to have some kind of means to help people who are on hard times. Agreed. What, well, this is, how was it? It was 2018, I believe. America started talking about basic cost of living. And other countries and other nations have this. And I think, I think it's, I know it's in Europe. I know that for sure. I think it's one of the Nordic countries where you have a basic cost of living. You have a COLA. Like, this is your cost of living allowance. You get in American dollars, the thing is like $1,400 a month. This is what you have your base pay. Everybody gets it. I don't care if you have a job, don't have a job. Everybody gets this. Yes, their taxes are higher, but everybody gets this. Here's 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 the thing: is if if we as America were to do this, it would have to be below the poverty line. Do you know why? The reason it has to be below the poverty line is because there are individuals out there who if you give them enough to where they can live off of without any providing without, without doing anything themselves they will just live off of that and you have to you cannot there needs you, to be something you need you need to productive. be able to p- apply pressure yeah and pressure is good stress is good there is good pressure and there is good stress and i i don't disagree with that and the only reason I say is because I have a sister. My sister, they have a three hundred thousand dollar house. I mean, your sister ain't inside. No, no, that's my wife. <laughs> she upgraded. <laughs> yeah, you know, in Tennessee, you're not a miss until you sleep with your sister. <laughs> no, but um, hey, you know, we never know. I might pull Joe Dirt and accidentally sleep with the sister I never met. <laughs> Could be Luke and Leia. kiss his sister. Kiss your sister. I mean, I'm very much convinced because originally Luke was supposed to end up with Leia, and they weren't supposed to be brother and sister. He was, but then that goes into Harry Potter, where the conspiracy theory is Harry and Ron's sister. She actually made a love potion that was strong enough to actually make Harry fall in love with her. Oh, I thought we were talking about how. Let's be serious. Harry should have ended up with Hermione. He, seriously, Harry and he Hermione, should, which is where they the were the main characters. Goes. They were the main this characters. This is where the conspiracy goes. He should have ended up with Hermione. Ron realistically should have married his sister because it's a whole breed of everyone's actually related. Well, to each other. I was gonna say Ron should have ended up with Luna Lovegood. I mean, I could see that the way the book showed it, they should have. Yeah, because like the Ron, like maybe other people have different perspective on this, but the Ron Hermione relationship was just a no go for me. Agreed. Like the entire ride. When I'm a kid, I'm sitting there looking at. It. When just, I'm an adult, it I'm sitting there looking at. It didn't make sense. It just doesn't feel right, man. But going back to government programs, which going I back think, to your sister. Yep, my sister. Government programs. I do think they have a place. I'm not saying get away with all of them. They they serve a. Purpose. Well, here's the here's the thing is, if not for the government programs, my dad who wasn't able, my ash daddy who wasn't able to work. You know, for so many years because he had kidney issues and he just wasn't able to breathe correctly because he was having heart issues and lung but it issues. it provided and a else. way to live. It provided him a way to live. It may not be, oh, Ritz. He wasn't Ritzy. But it provided a way to live. At least decent lifestyle. It, it As his son, as I progressed in life, you know, I made sure that he got, like, certain upgrades. Like, you know, I mean, he got a new flat screen TV in so every mother's day i had had my dad talk to me about this when we came down every mother's day i buy my mom a 300 dollars bouquet i got to the point now like there was a point where five kids were living in a pop-up trailer like we'd have to clean it out every day open up all the windshields i say windshields little sleeves water would leak in when it rained but but we lived on a campground for six months it's like i'm not there anymore but that's where i came from so it really hurts me in a way. I was like, oh, you've never been poor. Oh, hold on. We we're so poor. My dad was an E6 in the military. And at the time, we weren't making enough with five kids and my mom. Like,
anyway, so we were talking about my sister and the way she government programming, all that works. We were in Tennessee on one of our leaves before Ruth was born. And I don't have an issue with government programming at all. I think it has its time and place, but I do feel like she's abusing it in a lot of the way because we went to, I think it was Dollar General. Realistically, you can find more poor real estate in areas with Dollar Generals because I, I don't know. It's just the way they're. Who are you talking about the three Dollar Generals within the 10 mile radius of where I live? Okay? Exactly. And it, it drives me crazy. It, I don't understand it, but obviously their business plan works. They still work. And we went in there to pick up some medicine and she was talking about how her husband is working two jobs, but they also get a stipend for their house, which is a better house than what I had at the time. It was like, holy crap. Like my house costs $200,000 and you're, you have $350,000 house. Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me, but you guys are making it work. I'm proud of you. You guys never went to college. You don't have a job. What you do is you go and find furniture on the side of the road. You clean it up beyond belief. Like she could make a fucking YouTube channel. She could make an Etsy. She could go fucking ham with this. But we're we're talking about uh you and the airman. We're having so, a conversation. So yeah, the, this airman was having a conversation with me, and she was very frustrated because she does have a young child, mm-hmm. and you know she's in this relationship. They're married though, right? Yeah, they're married. Okay. And she was like, "Well, and part I had to I mean, sh- the kids like I what am- one, two years old, six months." So new, new, she's new. still healing from the pregnancy. Yes. And so at one point, and she knows me and she knows because I do it to the airmen all the time is I will drop truth on them. So yeah. hard, like I do, you'll, right? You'll drop truth so hard. There's like, whether you're ready for it or not, here you go. And yeah. nine times out of 10 that I've seen around you when they're actually dealing with shit, they'll come to you Yeah, because they're like, I'm going to get the truth out of Mike one way or another, whether I like it or not. Mike's telling me the bullshit truth. At, because at one time, because if you try and bullshit me, I will fucking, if you try and run me around circles, that doesn't mean anything to me. I will fucking cut you off. And she was trying to run me around circles. And she's like, well, this is his fault because he, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Birth control is a thing. Condoms no, no. are on. a thing. Time out. It takes two people to Thank fight. Thank you. It takes two people Thank to take you. Up. It takes Thank two you. people Thank to have you. sex. Hold yes. on. If you're having sex alone, that's called masturbating. Boop. So this is like it. It takes two. It, like she, she like hit like I because she was like trying to hawk around it, and I'm like dropping hard truth, dropping hard truth, dropping hard truth, and she's like, "That's not what I wanted to hear." And I was like, "Well, I'm not here, I'm not to, here tell to tell you what you, what you want to hear. hear." She's like, "I," yeah. and she goes, "I know." That you're not going to tell me what I want to hear. It's just I'm not ready to deal with that right now. But that's on me. That's not on me. Yeah. If you come and hold a conversation with me and I give you hard truth, I'm giving you this is me. But but I did. I I told her I was like, listen, I know that you're going through a struggle. You're in a very young relationship. Right? How old is this individual? Twenty five. How old is her spouse? I don't know. Roughly the same age, I Probably guess. Probably give or take a year. Age. Give or take. So 25, she's E2, E3. He's an illegal immigrant. I don't care. They're married, so not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, they got to work through that. But so they're roughly both 25. She's in the military. They have split custody with that because a military member, which still astounds me, cannot own a child cannot have sole custody because if they get deployed which i understand right well and that's the other thing is we have all these government programs she she was stressing out because she's like oh if i get deployed i'm just not going to do it and i i had to like be like okay i need you to stop and listen to me for a second because when i was a, a a a small child there were long periods of time where I didn't see my stepdad, who was my dad. Don't get me wrong. Stepdad was my dad. But I didn't see him because he was working so hard that he was going in early and he was coming in late and I just wouldn't see him. Long or if I didn't see my see dad him, was like two and a half years. He was he was at Gitmo or he was in the sandbox but, but, overseas. But that's that's military, right? But it, I'm talking exactly. about civilian. 
I, I was because he was sitting there going, well, I could never deploy because blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you got to understand that the civilian world isn't any fucking easier. No. Like, because you still got to work. You still have to fuck, put fucking money on the table. You still have to feed your kids. You still have to feed yourself. You still have to put a roof over people's head. So my uncle, so he's huge firefighter in Houston. He's been that way for 20 years. He finally made chief. He's over. He's wrote a couple books. He's huge advocate for Houston across the board. He might know my uncle. We've I, talked I, about it. He does. I talked to him. He does oh, know did, your uncle. He actually knows He's my uncle. He's actually trained with your uncle. Oh, and that's fucking your hilarious. Like, <laughs> so Relic, part of the club. Yeah. He's been there and trained Relic. So he is a firefighter. He's made it. He's been through the fucking ringer. And Houston fucking hates cops and firefighters across the board. Yeah, they the do. The mayor does. Mayor yeah, does. Yeah, the mayor hates them. Because the cops thought that the mayor was on their side. And so they worked with him to fuck over the firefighters. And then as soon as they got done fucking over the firefighters, they fucked over the cops. Yep. And the cops are sitting there going, oh, What the oh, fuck just oh. happened? They're just holding their dicks, sitting there going, I, I don't know what happened. And the happened. mayor, because that's the mayor actually, also hates fucking hospitals because his wife is a nurse. She's a cardiac nurse. So she deals with all the hard stuff. Same bullshit across the board. So both of them have high stress, high vis jobs. They're so busy most of the time. Their son, one of their sons joined the Navy. Their other son, great fucking basketball player. Whitest kid you know, but can shoot hoops with the best of them, honestly. Just because you're white don't mean you can't shoot. No, but in today's world, a lot of it seems... I, I have never met... So... I'm white, obviously. I grew up in Baltimore for a while. Are you white? Yep, I'm still white. Damn. <laughs> but I need more ink. He shoots up in freaking Houston a bunch of the time. Proper shoot up, not wrong shoot up. And he's playing ball with a bunch of them. Hey, listen, any shoot up's a good shoot up. But uh... he has he has scouts looking at him, and I was like, if you're gonna do this, hard charge it because look, your dad, my uncle. Firefighter. Did college, did all this. Sweat equity. He's here for, he has two days on, two nights off. He works panels. Two on, two off. Three on, three off. And most of the time, realistically, that's three on, one off. Four on, one off. And that that's just the way Houston is right now. Yeah. And then his wife, it's like, it's the same fucking thing. It's like, you, you got to understand, high-vis jobs are like that. It's yeah. just... So going back to the airman, understanding that she's dealing with this stuff. I mean, really, it came down to it's again, because I'm I'm going to tell hard truths. And mm -hmm. so it was like, listen, I know that you're going through a hard time with your husband, your, your new husband. But you got to realize that there are cutoff points for this. Agreed. You have your two year. You have your five or seven year, right? It can be a five or it can be a seven year. Yep. And then you can have a, tw then there's the 12 there's year. the 12 year. And once you get past the 12 year, you're golden. So what I've heard recently is once you pass eight years, if you made it to eight years, realistically, statistically, you're going to make it. Well, me and Jess are past the eight years. At this point, I'm not starting over. No. Like, I do love her to death. I really do. I love my child to death. But I'm not starting over. No, if something happened to Jess, you would never be in a relationship again. No. I'd have friends, and that'd be it. Yeah. <laughs> but it it, it really drives as me. As long as your house never got as gross as that one friends we have. That acquaintance that we no longer talk to. Yeah. That's pretty gross, bro. I can't have four tires and cats shitting all over the place. And nah, like, dude. Oh, my like, son will take care of it. Nope, can't do it. Nope. I'm nah. sorry. It's like, look, I have cats, and I have no problem changing their automatic bullshit litter box yeah cool there's an app for that oh this cat shit this cat. and you can tell by the weight eventually right. you'll understand it. but i would totally tell the airman i was like look i'm not gonna say it gets better but you as a person get better it's like throughout my relationship i've learned is like a marriage is very much i decide every morning to love my wife i decide every morning to love my kid my kid my child Mixed between two words. Good. Chid, chid. Kyle. Chid. Chid. Kyle. Yeah, my Tennessee started coming out. Shot and killed. Judge oh. killed. 
<laughs> well, it, and I think I think my biggest frustration moment was is that it's it's his fault. And I was like, okay, listen, girl, I'm almost thirty five years old now, and I don't have kids. And she's like, well, you're one of the good ones. And I was like, here's what's up: is it takes two people to make this shit happen. You may be one of the good ones, but it still comes down to. I'm fucking fantastic, okay? Okay, well, I wasn't discounting you being a good I one. am amazing. Wasn't discounting that. Look at this. Ch- no. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a new shirt. They're snap uh. so they <laughs> No, I am excited for you to have a wife. I really am. Yeah, but, you know. But I'm... it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the right one. I So I have a friend that is working real estate up in Baltimore, He's doing a bunch of the stuff your dad's doing, dealing with business real estate. He just sold one that he made $40 million. But just like you, he's not just like, oh, well, this is my job. I'm going to throw all my bullshit online and people will love me because this persona. Right. No, I'm, I'm a real fucking person. Come come talk to me. Come let's, let's have a fucking conversation. That's the thing. And even when me and Jess met, it was like, I think I had like, 30 grand in the bank as a E2, E3. Just because the way I I deal with money, the way I deal with money was this way. And she was like, oh, well, I'm about to move from this apartment to this house that the rest of my neighbor, my rest of my roommates are moving to and I don't have a thousand dollar deposit. It's like, okay, well, I can give you a thousand dollars. But I also saw down the road, I was like, I see us going the long haul. I'm not saying throw $1,000 at a woman. You need to make your own investments. She right. was an investment for me. Right. And not in the, oh, women are property. No, I looked at the long-term relationship where we're No, gonna go. but relationships are investments. Exactly. There was, I don't know who I was listening to. It was, so, was it girlfriends are rented, fian- fiancés are leased, and wives are bought. Someone brought that up as like, when you understand that, you'll start understanding. And then they went to another term. Guys are are uh, copper pots. Women are porcelain pots. And when I started thinking about that, I was like, okay, well, if I drop a copper pot, it's going to dent. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, you can be like, oh, fuck you, bike. And you're like, yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, yeah, this may have hurt for a second, but then I'm moving on. Yeah. But you drop a porcelain pot, you're like, that that's going to break. So the one thing I say to you is going to break. When you start understanding your wife or your spouse, that is a woman, as a porcelain, you start changing the perspective. When you start looking at your wife as someone I have to buy, it's like, what that means in a way is I have to continue loving you the same way I'm, I was dating you. Because a lot of guys will go to a point where it's like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then you get married, and you're like, well, I already won you. I don't I don't have to continue sharing my feelings, my emotions. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's a, a continuous, continuous process. Build for the entire rest of your life. And you hear a lot of people is like, oh, I, can, I have to continue dating my spouse. Yes, because, again, love is a choice. You fall in and out and of love. And every relationship requires work. And scientifically... You are only capable of the emotion, the chemical emotion known as love for up to 18 months. And then you will fall out of love. Yep. And then the magic is, can you fall back in love with that person again? Because if you can't, y'all weren't meant to be together. And I definitely give my parents credit because my mom has said throughout our whole childhood, it's like every morning I decide to wake up and love your dad. I didn't understand it until I was married. And we had one of those hard fucking nights that was just like fucking brutal. It's like, I can't believe we're going through this bullshit. I'm like, look, I'm right. You're wrong. We go to bed. We wake up the next morning. And I woke up and I was like, I do still love her though. But that was a choice. Yeah. Because you do see statistically the number one cause of divorce is marriage. Well, you can't get divorced unless you're married. But it, All right. it we've, definitely... We've gone down this rabbit hole for a while. What else do we got on the list? <laughs> so, UK. This is something that 
astounded me. I didn't know this. So all UK pet food essentially needs to be able to be human consumable. So every single dog food, cat food needs to be able to be people consumable, hands down. Now, why is that? The reason for that is it really comes down to the elderly. Like I dove into the reason this started was because elderly folk in general, elderly people were eating cat food, dog food, and they needed to make sure it was that way. And I look at America and it's like, no, we throw just cornstarch and well, we throw cornstarch and shit that we expect people to eat. So the the FDA is a scam. The FDA has Agreed. been bought out for a long time now. The FDA. I wish every one of the government organizations could be like the FCC or the NCC, right? NCC. Remind me of that one. The the uh, weather. Yes. I used that app the other day. It was. Dude, the other day it fucking poured. No shit. So this bullshit. I'm walking out to my car and it's pouring. I'm like, shiny shirt at the time, nice pants for work. I'm gonna go grab my Pico. So I grab my Pico. I walk over to my car. The whole way to work. I gotta show you this video. This, no joke. I passed two wrecks on the way to work. I only have a 40 minute ride to work. Drive. 40 minute drive to work. Going to work, there was one wreck, side of the road, card flipped over. Completely flipped over on 10. I was like, okay, it's 5.20, 5.30 in the morning. Okay, maybe they just turned too quick. Keep looking at the camera. I don't understand how you flip that, but I make it over the overpass, driving down the road, and it's raining, so my car can't drive itself, so I'm listening to an audio book. Galaxy's Edge, great fucking book series, by the way. I'm on book. I finished book one and two that day, and I'm on book three and four now. And I'm driving down the road, and there's another wreck. So I'm like, okay. So we all slow down. I see all these brake lights. I slow down. And now I'm stopped here in traffic. There's maybe about seven cars that I can see in front of me. I'm on the far left, the yellow line. I see all these cars in front of me. I'm like, okay, cool. Now I'm looking at my rear view mirror. I throw my four ways because I'm Texas. Nobody freaking knows what's going on half the time when it's raining. They don't know how to drive. So my four ways are on, which are just your flashers. And I'm looking at my rear view mirror, and this truck is just flying down. I'm like, he's about a football field away from me. He's getting closer. Okay, what's going to happen? Now I can visibly see he's on his phone because his face is lit up. It's still dark right now. Still flying down the road. He gets about... I'd say about 30 yards away from me. He now notices me in all the other bright fucking flashing lights. It's like, I'm in danger. I'm about to get rear-ended. So I'm just like, oh, my body's going to be loose. I'm just prepared for this. I don't want to get hit, but I don't want to be tense. So this dude flies freaking forward. And I'm like, I'm about to get hit, about to get hit. And he turns last minute, slams into the center media. A cop's right there. Cop sees this whole thing. And I'm just like, I'm going to have to watch this video on my dash cam. Because the Tesla has all these yeah. different cameras. Which I love about it because I can see this bullshit. I was like, oh, this happened. And everybody's like, oh, no, that never happened. No, there's so much bullshit that happens in San Antonio driving. that There was a shopping cart six months ago that was going down the highway. Full on engine and like mega shopping cart. I've seen that one. I've seen it on he, the fucking look, internet. He's driving down the road. Yeah. At the time I was driving my Jeep, I was like, nobody's gonna believe me. This has been Name Pending. Name Pending. Hey, girl, hey. I'm Mike Culberson. I'm Keeper. I need you to fuck that like button just so hard. And leave a comment below. Let us know what we gotta work on. Let us know what we're, where we're faulting. If you want us to talk about something, throw it down below. We'll, we'll do some research on it. I mean, I'll at least do research on it. Mike can't read. He's from Texas. I'm from Texas. I don't know so, how to do that damn reading. So we'll definitely do some research <laughs> on whatever topic you throw below. And as long as it's like YouTube acceptable, we'll totally read it. We'll totally understand it and try to get as deep knowledge as we can. Of course, you got the two T states here, Tennessee and Texas. Our reading level's about third grade at most. 
four and a half. Yeah, I listen to audiobooks, yeah. so yeah. I can't. I, I, read. I actually can see what words mean. That makes one of us. So, All <laughs> this right. is his name pending. It's been fun hanging with you. Have a good night. <laughs>